Hello, my name is Poemu, and welcome to my video about the nine tips for analyzing the battlefield in Baldur's Gate 3. This is an important topic because a lot of how turn-based systems work is based upon the fact that you can look at what is given in front of you and you can adapt your fighting strategy to whatever is presented by the game. In these tips, we're going to go over things such as, you know, how to identify enemies and figure out how to deal with them, what you need to look for when it comes to the actual battlefield itself, and a couple of tips about how to better set yourself up for success in combat. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Number one, how many enemies are present on the battlefield? This is the first step in all combat, and it is rather straightforward, but we're going to talk about it anyways, because there is more than just counting, ah, oh, yes, there are five, and now we will go. The main thing that you have to keep in mind when it comes to combat in Baldur's Gate 3 is there are many ways to approach it. And what I found to be very effective and also somewhat fun is trying to figure out how to look at what I'm given, see all the enemies on the field. Can I prevent at least one of those enemies from joining against me in this combat? Now, I'm not saying that you can like persuade them to not join you. I'm saying, is there any way to either eliminate one enemy immediately or even a group of enemies immediately? Is there a way that I can either A, wait for enemies to move next to each other or B, force them next to each other to where I can use an AOE spell or like an AOE ability of some kind in order to weaken them before combat starts. Because remember, when you're in combat, you have one action, one bonus action, and your movement. So if you can use an action and do damage before combat starts, that is a free action that you just got in that combat. For example, if you just cast a fireball before combat even starts, number one, you probably should try and talk to people first, but let's say you're just casting anyways, that's a lot of damage that you have now put out and the enemy has done absolutely nothing yet and that's the kind of advantages that you want to grab so if there are more than like one enemy figure out how do you bring them together how do you get them into a position where you can get some kind of advantage uh, and one thing to always keep in mind is just because you see enemies on the battlefield doesn't mean that's all that there is there could be enemies that are outside your vision range there could be enemies that are invisible there could just be more enemies right around the corner waiting for something to happen. You don't know. That is just something you always have to have in the back of your mind. Be like, okay, if I was the enemy, where would I have reinforcements come from? And just keep an eye on it and be prepared for any new friends. And number two is what types of enemies are there? Uh, you can break these down into three very basic groups, which is the melee characters, the ranged characters, and the spellcasters. Out of these three, I'm definitely more afraid of spellcasters because there is a lot of effects they could do that can shut down your players immediately. But you do need to identify the largest threat in the battle. That won't always be a spellcaster. That's just what I usually keep an eye on. Do they have a very large tank? It seems like they're going to hit hard. Do they have a ranged character that's got some crazy bow? Do they have a mage that is casting really difficult spells? You need to, hopefully before combat starts, try and guess who that person is. That way, you can go after them first. Remember, you want to always try and be focus firing enemies because an enemy at one health is pretty much the same as an enemy at 50 health. They're gonna do the same amount of damage, so you gotta take them out early. The last thing you want is to make a large tank very weak and then they drink a health potion and all of a sudden you now have another two rounds of them instead of one. And this especially applies to like groups of enemies. So if you look at a potential battlefield and you see there are all melee troops, then you probably don't wanna rush in to fight them. And what I mean by that is you wanna keep your range, right? You wanna sit back there, shoot at them with bows, throw spells at them, put down some terrain that slows them down in some way, limit their mobility and just don't get hit, right? That's obviously the most important thing in combat, don't die. So if you don't get hit, you can't die. If they're all ranged or they have a lot of range, maybe you want to sneak in and get closer. That way you could close that gap because they get disadvantage on their attacks if you are within five feet of them. So there are lots of these things that you, you'll you just kind of pick up on it as time goes by, but you'll need to identify these enemies, which is pretty easy for the most part. Usually what they wear is a good sign of combat they do, um, but always keep an eye out for those pesky spellcasters. They'll, they'll get you. Number three, are there any special battlefield effects? Things like fire, poison, acid on the ground, if the ground is wet, if there's a lot of wind, if it's raining, uh, anything that's happening around you or is on top of the ground itself needs to be thought of because it may get in the way of your plan. You know, if you wanna rush down their range users, but there's a line of fire in between you, maybe it's best that you open up the combat with casting Create Water 
and then you can create a path right on through for your fighter to go and fight them. Things like fire are very good for dipping your weapons in them to give you extra fire damage. Acid lowers your armor class, so obviously you don't want to stand in the acid, but if you could push an enemy into the acid, then that's, I think it's minus two armor class on them. So you want to look for opportunities to use these battlefield effects to your advantage. Definitely do not sleep on them. It's a very important part of how combat works in Baldur's Gate 3. Number four, are there any obstacles on the battlefield? When I talk about obstacles, I'm thinking about dangerous terrain such as lava. I'm thinking about traps and I'm thinking about large holes and cliffs. Things that you can't really interact with for the most part, except taking damage or causing other people to take damage. These things are not as easy to manipulate as fire or acid. Are these traps going to force you to walk around? Can you get through the traps? Can you force enemies to walk through traps to you? you know, are there cliffs that you could push people off of? These are things that you need to keep in mind. Number five, where is the high ground? Something, something, I had the high ground now, Anakin. You know I had to do it, I'm sorry. But attacking from the high ground is very important for multiple reasons. Number one, it gives you a bonus to your attack. If you are attacking from the high ground, you get a plus two to your attack rolls. If you are attacking from the low ground, you get a minus two for attack rolls. It's better to be on the high ground than the low ground. In general, also, high ground means that you see more, so you can see if there are more enemies running around. There's no bad reason I can't think of, unless there's absolutely no cover up there and you need the cover. Uh, and remember, there are multiple ways to move to the high ground. You can walk there, you can jump there, you can use spells, you can just start combat there. But usually, taking the high ground with at least one character is the correct play. Number six, cover. Cover means you don't get hit. This is good. Cover also means you can't hit enemies. This is bad. You need to find out where can you find cover and where's the enemy going to try and find cover. Can you destroy the enemy's cover? Can your cover be destroyed? Because if you can pop out, cast a spell, and then hide back behind a wall, that is a fantastic turn because you've done damage and they can't damage you. Now do keep in mind, it's not necessarily that simple because that just means that the enemies may focus fire on a different character that you have. So you do have to be careful about how this works. But it works very well if everyone is behind cover and you just pop out, you shoot, and you go back behind the wall. You can also try and set cover up before combat starts. Remember, you can move things in the world, things like crates and chests that you can move and you can hide behind. Always just keep that in mind. Cover is very, very important for survivability, especially if you are outnumbered. Number seven is a quick one, and that is any chance of reinforcements. Will there be enemy reinforcements, and can you prevent them? And where are they coming from? That's probably an important thing to know, too. If you've played Early Access, you know that there is a place where it is very easy for enemy reinforcements to show up if they hear you fighting. There are ways to counteract this. You can close doors. You can break bridges. You can cast the silence spell to make sure nobody hears anything. It's just important because if you plan a combat to be very easy, you've got everything set up perfectly, and you go through, and then all of a sudden, there are 20 more enemies coming your way, you probably should have planned for that in advance as well. It's, you know, you got to plan for the worst case scenario, and reinforcements are pretty much the worst case scenario. Number eight, can I get surprise? Surprise is a free round for you or the enemy if they get it on you. Never forget that. It is always, always, always beneficial to have surprise. There is no downside. It gives you a free round in combat to set up the battlefield, to do damage, to move into position, whatever you need to do. You should always try and get the jump and never, never get jumped. Obviously, that's not possible. There are some fights where you will be getting surprised and then you'll know what those lowly goblins feel like when the level five adventurers come and cast fireball on them. And finally, number nine, do I even need to fight? It's a bit of a cop-out answer, but hear me out. Sometimes the best idea is not to fight. If you look at the battlefield and you've gone through all these tips, you're like, yeah, you know, this doesn't look good. It looks like we're gonna have a very tough time winning this. Maybe it's best not to engage. Maybe there's a way around them. Maybe you can figure things out diplomatically. Always needing to fight is not the greatest of ideas, not only because you may miss some, some story if you just go kill everyone, uh, but also because sometimes you're not going to be strong enough and you're going to have to go and find some new items, maybe level up a little bit, or come back with some mm, tricky tactics to find success. And that's nine tips that I have for analyzing the battlefield in Baldur's Gate 3. I hope you found something in here that was interesting or that you did not know before, did not think about. Uh, if I miss anything, please let me know down in the comments. I would appreciate seeing it, and I'm sure others would too. The more we share our collective knowledge, the better players we will all become. 
But that is going to do it for today. I would like to thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.